you mentioned that you know you wanted two x versus a hundred x or a ten x delta between the lowest paid person and the highest paid person in that position. How did you come up with that two x number, or why do you think that might be the sweet spot for most companies? It just all the data just pointed to that, and you know one of the pioneers was the container store. You know, again, they're a retailer. They sell waste baskets and closet organizers. You know, it's a it's a kind of a frontline position. But and Kip and Garrett used to teach for me at that MIT program that I founded for EO. In fact, I'm headed up there tomorrow with the graduate program, Gathering of Titans. And they early on had a value that was one great equals three good. And they said, you know what? Let's just pay our retail employees twice what they would make in any other retail store. Let's just take compensation off the table, but let's train them so well, 250 plus hours versus typically eight in retail, so that they're three times more productive in delivering on revenue per square foot and profit per square foot and per customer visit and all of that. You know, if you've really got a right, the right kind of customer uh, service person in the store, uh, sales associate, man, when you walk into the store and you want to buy just one thing and you leave with a lot more because you've got the real solution you need, that requires a much higher paid, better skilled person. And so the it started with a belief that one great employee can replace three good so we can afford to pay them twice as much. And if you can earn twice what you could really in any other company in that position, we think that's Delta enough. Now, Costco, if we were very specific, Costco crushes Sam's Club in any metric you want to look at. And their people by position are paid anywhere between 40 and 80% more than what they would make at Sam's Club. But their performance is 3x. So they're not quite twice. They're 40% to 80% more. So I think as long as there's a decent delta over industry average, you've got a chance to attract and retain, you know, a higher quality person, which by de definition, they're generally easier to lead. They self-manage and they're more the A player that you need to be successful. I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, one last piece there, or one last question there before we kind of wrap up the show. Uh, I, I have a final question as well that I think might require some thought. So uh, when we're talking about this compensation piece, are we structuring it like a bonus where if you hit certain metrics, you're going to be bonus to where you might make 2x versus, you know, the next person who's maybe not performing as well as you? Or is it your base compensation or just uh, a combination of the two? Yeah, at Allied Printing, which we feature in the Scaling Up comp book. And by the way, we have 100 mid-market companies in there that are not Facebook or Google. They're, you know, playing, not, not playing, but they're companies like us that we can identify with. John's, it's a combination. Their base pay is allows you to get twice. And it's not a bonus. It's based on performance. By the way, it's a, it's a fairly easy measure. You become you get promoted as a customer service rep, and make sure you give various titles. Start with beginner, you know, to wizard and maestro. We give that example in in the book. It has to do with the size of the gross margin of the project. The more important, larger print ongoing customers, they don't need two customer service reps. They just need one. But that client brings in considerably more gross margin dollars than some of the smaller clients. And so it's generally tied to the amount of gross margin dollars of printing that you're handling. And that's where you're really gaining uh, your measure of efficiency. And if you're keeping that customer happy and making sure their print job is done correct, those two key people, the customer service rep, in the print lead, then you deserve that compensation. Then on top of very fair pay, they have a company-wide bonus that's paid out annually. And it your percent of the bonus is your percent of total comp. 
So if you're making more as a customer service rep, you're also getting a bigger piece of the bonus. So it's a double win. It's a double incentive to really increase your capabilities and your level of service and your ability to interact with people and solve problems and all of the stuff you need your people to learn to do. But then John does something very interesting. He only pays out half the bonus. The other half, the other 50% vests over the next five years, 10% a year over the next five years, creating these future buckets of payout that you only receive if you're still at the company. And so it's a beautiful retention strategy. And the question becomes, but aren't the employees upset? And John's not paying interest on that. Aren't they, are they upset that John is sitting on 50% of their bonus each year? And what John explains to them is, look, the worst thing that can happen to a well-performing team is to lose an A player. It's the worst thing you can do to devastate a team is to lose one of your best people. Now, everyone else has to carry their load. It demoralizes the team. And so his people appreciate that the design of their comp plan is such that the better performing stars are more compensate or more incentivized to stay than they are to leave. Let me finish with one last story and then we'll get to your final question. So I want to come back to making sure that every entrepreneur listening to this, every CEO has named their strategy for 2024. Like uh, Top Gun, Maverick named that mission Dagger and each of the four teams was Dagger 1, Dagger 2, Dagger 3, Dagger 4. So my final example, and I know it's of a large company, but I highlight it because if they can do it, you can do it. Laxman is the new CEO of Starbucks and Howard Schultz has gone through, you know, three other CEOs. And what I appreciate, and I went ahead, not that I'm giving a stock recommendation, I went and bought some Starbucks stock because of it. But Laxman said our 2024 and beyond strategy is called our triple shot reinvention strategy. So first of all, he gave it a name and it's a play on being Starbucks triple shot reinvention strategy. And he says, we have three priorities. Now I want to give this perspective. This is a $36 billion global company with lots of problems and lots of opportunity. Yet Laxman has boiled it down to three. He said, first, we want to add 35,000 locations between now and 2030. You might call that a big hair audacious goal. No, notice it's not a revenue number. It's not a number of customers. It really is emphasized in their unit of one economics. Uh, Perspective Raj, that's 100 locations every week between now and 2030. Said number two, to help pay for that, we want to find $3 billion in savings. Now, on $36 billion in revenue, that means he wants to improve margins by 8%. And that's exactly what we encourage entrepreneurs to do. Rather than lose four points of margin because they scale, add four points, that eight points of additional margin, in their case, 3 billion on 36 billion, is what he needs then to help fuel number three, which is by 2025. So that's a short-term goal. He wants to double the income of his baristas. He realizes the constraint to scaling, especially if you're gonna add 35,000 locations up from 21,000 he's got now, he's gonna need baristas. And he's effectively agreed what we've just discussed. He needs to find a way to double their income between now and 2025. And so he's got a short term, he's got a medium term, and he's got a long term. And then what's nice is as you're in your daily huddle, what are you working on and what's in your way? The question is, hey, is that either going to open more stores, help us save three billion, or figure out a way to double the income of baristas. If you're not doing one of those three things, then I don't know what you're working on. Uh, And it provides great focus to that global organization. Every entrepreneur listening to this has to provide that same clarity. And that really is the essence of Mastering the Rockefeller Habits. I brought that book back. It's 22nd anniversary edition, came out last Tuesday. That's the book everyone should start with and have every employee read 
Scaling up then is kind of the master's class, if you would. 